Well, hey everybody, it's Mr. Schauber and welcome to our D-Day presentation. Uh, and, you know, what can be said about D-Day? Uh, tons of books have been written about it, movies have been made about it, uh, classics. D-Day is going to be the turning point of the war in Western Europe. And this is going to be the Allied invasion of the coast of France at Normandy, France. Uh, the codename for the operation was Overlord, and this is going to be a massive, massive invasion, uh, one that, you know, the likes of which had never been seen before. So let's talk, let's talk about kind of, you know, some details, and I want to show you a bunch of pictures uh, that have to do with D-Day, and, and let's get going. In the late spring of 1944, the Allies started a massive troop buildup in uh, in southern England, and so you had uh, English troops, you had American troops, Canadian troops. They were even joined by Polish and Dutch and Belgian uh, and French troops. But this huge troop buildup in southern England takes place, and the, the Germans know that we're going to attack them in France. We're going to sail across the English Channel. That's just the logical thing to do uh, from the from the British coast. You sail to the French coast, and we're going to attack them there. And the Germans are bent on keeping us out of France. Again, just like when we when we conquered Italy, we eliminated that buffer zone uh, that Germany was trying to use. Well, Hitler knows if the Allies can get France, then that's he would lose another buffer zone. And so D-Day is probably the most famous day of World War II. At least it's the one that, you know, pro probably more books have been written about and so forth. Probably the most talked about day uh, in World War II history. So what happens? Well, shortly after midnight on June 6th, 1944, the largest landing by sea in history takes place. All right, let's look at some of those numbers. These are eye-popping numbers. But if you look at the bottom, and we'll come back to this map in just a, a, a couple of minutes, but you, you can see along the French coast there that the Germans figure that we're going to attack there. And, and they're right. And so they, they start defending that coastline and building up the defenses like no other. Uh, they added machine gun emplacements and barbed wire fences on the beaches and landmines, water mines, underwater obstructions, so our boats couldn't get too close to the beach. Uh, they figured we were coming, and they were right. So let's look at some of the numbers as far as people and craft and so forth that they go after those beaches on D-Day. So at dawn on D-Day, uh, and D-Day is really, D-Day is the first day of, a, of an invasion, okay, of an operation. And so every operation has a D-Day, day number one, but it's just that this was such a massive thing that, that this, you know, this uh, operation is basically just known as D-Day, even though it was called Operation Overlord officially, it's just known as D-Day. So about 4,600 Allied invasion craft boats are going to be used from battleships to destroyers, you name it, okay, Higgins boats. About 2,000 planes, American and, and British planes, are going to uh, go over the beaches and try to bomb out the, the Germans. Uh, 23,000 American and British airborne troops are going to be dropped in, um, you know, a, a daring nighttime maneuver, uh, kind of like the night, the night before D-Day, all right, or the morning of, okay. About 150,000 other troops who all amassed, uh, amassed on the, the British coastline are going to be involved in this. And the objective is take the French coastlines, conquer the beaches which the Germans are defending. And so at dawn on D-Day, you have allied uh, warships in the, in the English Channel just massively shelling the coast. You have, like I said, you have the 2,000 planes flying over trying to knock out the Germans and their gun emplacements and so forth. And then you're going to try to land all these troops, uh, run them up onto the beach in these Higgins boats, and go after the Germans there. 
And so this is going to be unbelievable in its scope, its size, its magnitude. And uh, hey, what else can you say? Okay, so let's go back to that. Um, let's go back to that map here in just a second. But long story short, the because the Germans have built up such massive defenses along the coast, despite our just huge numbers and firepower and just our massive, uh, you know. You can see all the numbers here. Despite all that, the Germans put up a, a tremendous defense and inflict a lot of casualties on the Allies. So let's look at the coastline again, and we'll see where uh, the Americans landed and where the British, you know, uh, were given charge of, and the Canadians and so forth. So you can see the. Uh, The Allies had basically picked out five areas of the coastline, and they had given each beach a, a code name. And so you had Utah Beach and Omaha Beach that the Americans are going to be landing at. The British got Gold Beach, the, the Canadians got Juneau Beach, and a combined British and French force was tasked with taking Sword Beach. Now, it just so happens that Utah and Omaha beaches are the most heavily fortified and the Germans put up the biggest defenses there. And, uh, and, and of course, the, the most casualties are going to happen there. But, uh, you know, th this is just going to be so huge. And can you imagine the sight if you're a German soldier on one of those beaches, especially Utah or Omaha, as the Allies are coming? Can you imagine the just the sheer attacks, that you know, the shelling that... Uh, that the warships out in the ocean are, are producing and the airplanes overhead. And man, like this would have been just some, some unbelievable sight. But with all the numbers we have, with all the, just the massive, you know, firepower and, and material that we have, we are, we are able to get onto the beaches. Uh, and within a week and, a, uh, you know, within a week of the, of D-Day, and, and D-Day itself is brutal. You know, just at, at uh, Omaha Beach alone, we suffer 2,000 casualties, okay? But basically that day, by that day, we have knocked the Germans back and taken the beaches, okay? Uh, and within a week, you had, uh, of course, the beaches are, are secure, and you have half a million men, half a million Allied soldiers on uh, that have come ashore. And uh, by late July... So within a month and a half after D-Day, you had uh, about 2 million Allied troops in France. So once we secure the beaches and knock the Germans back, then it's a matter of time before we overwhelm them, okay? And so, of course, there's going to be bitter fighting after we conquer these beaches because the Germans are going to, you know, they, they don't want to lose France at any cost. And so uh, they're going to to put up a very stiff defense, really, really a tough, uh, it's tough for the allied troops, but we're able to, to, in the end, win out. So let's look at some of these pictures along the way, uh, after, you know, D-Day and then after. Here's General Eisenhower, who was given charge to basically help plan D-Day, and he was in charge of it. Okay, can you imagine? Uh, that's some that's some heavy responsibility, but full victory, nothing else, he said, all right, so, uh, you know, the, and, and this was a must win, if you will, in sports, we always use, you know, or sometimes we use the, it's a must win game, you know, and, and I love um, the legendary coach of the Buffalo Bills football team was once asked before a Super Bowl, is this a must win for your team, and of course, he would have liked to win this, to have won the Super Bowl, but He's, he looked at him, and he was a World War II vet. And he looked at him and said, uh, this is not a must win, this, this football game. World War II was a must win. And in order for us to win in World War II, you guys, we had to win at D-Day. This picture is of U.S. Uh, Army Rangers. Uh, I, I love this picture. It's, you know... Interesting. We know these guys' names even, okay? And uh, 
it one of you know it's, it says you know this, the guy on this the far left he was killed during the landing okay uh you know i mean this this humanizes these guys these are these are people they just like me and you that are on these Higgins boats going to land on these beaches. And, and, you know, if you're on a Higgins boat and, and a German uh, piece of artillery hits too close to your ship or hits your ship and you could, you could all be killed or, or the ship, if it's too far out in the ocean and, and you are not able to get close enough to the beach, then you might just have to bail, you know, abandon ship right there. And you got a backpack on that weighs 70 to a hundred pounds. It has all your ammo. It has your, it has your extra weapons. It has your food. It has your bedroll. It's got everything. And you're in your uniform with your boots. So if you have to bail out into 20 or 30 feet of water, you got to try to swim. And you're not swimming with a 100 pounds back, uh, you know, 100 pound backpack on. And so you, you cut that backpack loose if you can before you drown. And if you can, then you've just lost all your stuff. Your backpack goes to the bottom of the ocean, right? And you try to swim ashore with your boots and your uniform on, and hopefully you still have a, uh, some kind of a gun, uh, but chances are you might not. And so if you can get toward the shore, now you got a, you know, you don't have a weapon maybe. And you're trying to get up on the beach and machine gun bullets are flying at you and, and artillery is coming at you. And you can see why there were so many casualties, okay, as the Allies tried to conquer these beaches. And I mean, this would have been just crazy. So the guys at D-Day, especially, you know, those first waves of guys at D-Day, a lot of them didn't make it. And uh, the ones that did, boy, can you imagine the stories they have? And they probably don't want to talk about it, but they would have crazy stories. Here it says American troops march through the streets of a British port town on their way to the docks where they'll be loaded onto... Uh, into landing craft for the D-Day assault. They're getting ready to go, all right? Imagine what's going through their minds. What would be going through your mind? You know, it's pretty crazy to think about. A section of the armada of Allied landing craft with their protective barrage balloons uh, head toward the French coast, right? This is a crazy picture. A low-flying Allied plane sends German soldiers running for shelter on a beach in France before D-Day. Uh, the flyers were taking photos of German coastal barriers in preparation for the upcoming June 6th invasion. So you have these German German troops setting up the defenses, and uh, they see the Allied plane, a few of them do, and they start to, and they take off running, right? This could have been the view that you would have had if you were on a Higgins boat uh, getting near a beach. And you're under machine gun fire, and you know the, the, when that ramp goes down, you get off. Uh, you get off the, the boat, and you're in the water. You want the, the boat to be as close to the beach as possible, so the water's not not too high. But like I said, sometimes it didn't work out that way, and sometimes it did. Smoke streams from U.S. Coast Guard landing craft approaching the French coast on D-Day after German machine gun fire caused an explosion by setting off an American soldier's hand grenade. Uh, talk about crazy. But this kind of thing happened, right? And you couldn't prepare for that kind of stuff. This, some of the stuff, you know, it, you never even thought would happen, and maybe it did. So expect the unexpected. This picture is worth not a thousand words, but a million words. Uh, some of the first assault troops to hit the beachhead in Normandy, France, take cover behind enemy, enemy obstacles, right? As machine guns are firing at you, you get behind any cover you can. Uh, and, I mean, un oh man, this is unbelievable. I cannot even fathom uh, trying to take these beaches, especially being the first waves of guys, because you're totally exposed, right? Eventually we overwhelmed the beaches with our numbers. But the first couple of waves of troops trying to land at the beaches, you don't have any protection. Uh, you know, there's nobody in front of you uh, that, that they're aiming for. They're aiming for you. All right, here's D-Day. These guys, uh, their, their landing craft got sunk. And so they're being rescued here at Omaha Beach. So these are Americans.
here's a view of just some of the ships. Uh, man, this is just <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, all the boats. Well, we we know we had 4,600 invasion craft. You know, uh, carrying 150,000 troops, basically. That's insane, right? But uh, yeah, crazy. This is a classic picture. American soldiers on Omaha Beach recover the dead after June 6, 1944, after the D-Day invasion. And there were plenty of dead laying on the beach. Helmets discarded by German prisoners who were taken to a prison camp in a field in Normandy, France. So once we overwhelm the Germans on D-Day finally, uh, we're able to capture a bunch of them and, and take them prisoner. And you know, these are their helmets here. Uh, they just left them in the field. And beyond the beaches there, that's what, that's what you would have seen. You had the beaches, the, cliff, the cliffs, and then you get into the French countryside. Canadian soldiers from the 9th Brigade land with their bicycles at Juneau Beach, right? Uh, same day on D-Day, right? While the Americans are at Utah and Omaha Beach taking machine gun fire, uh, the Canadians had, had things a little better at Juneau Beach. It wasn't quite as stiff a resistance. That's good for them. Allied troops unload equipment and supplies on Omaha Beach in Normandy in early June of 44. So after we take the beaches on that initial day, uh, then it becomes a matter of, you know, we start knocking the Germans back. They start retreating, uh, the ones that haven't been taken captive or, or, or killed. And now the Allies don't have any resistance, pretty much. They can just land things onto the beaches. And so that's when we start landing all our supplies, our tanks. Uh, that's when, you know, all these other troops come ashore. And like I told you, it doesn't take long for us to have half a million, then a million, then two million Allied troops in France. U.S. reinforcements wade through the surf as they land at Normandy in the days following the Allies' June 1944 D-Day invasion. So these guys didn't uh, face the same gunfire, right, that the first waves did. The, the beaches were pretty secure, and these guys were able to come ashore. You would have wanted to be in one of these groups, believe me. Some planes and gliders above the French countryside during the Normandy invasion, right? Um kind of getting a bird's eye view of what's going on, where the Germans are. Now, even once the beaches are secure, you still had to be careful because you knew the Germans had planted landmines all throughout that area. And so that's why the troops are marching in single file. Uh, obviously, they're going on, on the area that is kind of the path, okay, and the path's not real wide, but you go so that you, you're trying to avoid the landmines that are, that are around the countryside. And, uh, you know, this is how you move your troops and your supplies. And so here's some American dead in a French field, okay, uh, in the aftermath of D-Day. A lot of American men are buried over in France from World War I and World War II. There's American cemeteries over there. Uh, full of, of American war veterans. And so after the beaches are secured now, like I said, we're pushing the Germans back. And so the American troops and the Allied troops overall are, uh, are going to be trying to move farther and farther into France, and the Germans are going to try to keep us out. And so you can see, you know, these guys are under enemy fire, and the Germans could be behind those hedges, and they could be behind trees and you just didn't know right but you're trying to advance further into into France each and every day into the countryside and eventually get to Paris this picture is to me incredible and it's haunting and it's it's i don't know it's it's all the adjectives you can think of you know um this is a town called uh Saint-Lô and 
the next month after D-Day, you know, the, the, the Allied troops are pushing farther into France, but two French kids, right, are watching the convoys and the trucks the Allies had, and uh, their city is just about destroyed. Look at all the buildings that are just bombed out. And, you know, imagine being those kids, right? I mean, they're just watching, watching the Americans stroll through. Uh, you know, and they're happy that the, that the Allies have liberated the towns, uh, you know, that, that they have so far, but just, man, crazy, right? Think of, you know, think of your life uh, if you're these kids. And in Cherbourg, right, France, uh, a month and a half or so after D-Day, you had people trying to get across this bridge that's just buckled and, you know, all just, just hammered. Right. You know, the Germans had control of the country and, you know, until D-Day uh, and and as they were retreating, oftentimes the Germans would purposefully uh, destroy things so the Allies couldn't use them. Right. It was kind of the scorched earth policy idea. And and so and just the damage they did, just incredible. And so sometimes even, you know, French uh, civilians got involved, right? These, these resistance fighters, they'd help the allies, you know, in towns. And they try to, the, the goal was you tried to root every German out of every town, right? And because the Germans were going to fight to the death oftentimes to keep, to keep those towns under their control. And so you had to get them all out of there. And so the allies finally get to Paris, and they're going to eventually liberate Paris. But this is an interesting uh, picture because you have crowds of people in Paris celebrating the entry of the Allied troops, right? And thinking, okay, our city's safe. We're liberated. The Germans are gone. And all of a sudden, a, a, a German sniper who's still in town somewhere is firing from a building, okay? And, uh, you know, snipers would be around still uh, right at the end. And so, I mean, this is crazy, right? So the Allies had to get them all out. And they finally did. All right. Uh, the American and free French troops make a peaceful entrance in, into uh, Paris in August of 1944. Um, and this picture is taken on August 29th, uh, 1944. And you can see the Champs Elysees in the background, uh, or they're on the Champs Elysees, which is like the main the main road going through Paris, right? Uh, and the Arc de Triomphe, right? The triumphant arc, uh, arch, you know. And so a couple of of you know historical things: the, the Champs Elysees and the Arc de Triomphe are, are historical landmarks. But and and fortunately, the Germans didn't destroy all that. But um, Yep, the Americans liberated Paris and, you know, uh, as well as, as some of the other Allied troops, and it was a great day, right? So once the Allies have, uh, have liberated Paris, and then they get into Belgium, okay, British and Canadian uh, troops will, uh, will liberate Brussels and Antwerp, Belgium a few days later. Uh, after uh, the Americans get into Paris, uh, then a combined uh, Allied force attacks the Germans occupying Holland and uh, the Netherlands. And so this is uh, going to be a major paratrooper operation. You can see the paratroopers here uh, land in Holland, and this is called Operation Market Garden. It was the largest airborne operation in history. Some 15,000 troops were landing by glider and another 20,000 by parachute. Okay, so 35,000 uh, troops were landing from the skies. And and, and the fighting is going to be tough in the Netherlands as well because, you know, the Germans have lost France, they've lost Belgium, and now they're trying, they're trying to keep the Netherlands. They're, they're, you know, these countries like dominoes are falling, and uh, eventually the dominoes are going to fall right into Germany. And so Germany's losing all these buffer zone areas around it. Here's a rough landing for one of the paratroopers, okay? But this was Operation Market Garden again.
And finally, our last picture here is it's just kind of cool, right? It says in the sky above the Netherlands, American tow planes with gliders strung out behind them fly over the windmill at Valkenswaard near Eindhoven, right, on their way to support airborne uh, the airborne army in Holland. Okay, so Operation Market Garden again. And the Allied troops eventually are able to take back the Dutch towns that the Germans controlled. And so, you know, so D-Day, we take France, Belgium, and the Netherlands, and boy, it's tough. A lot of casualties on the Allied side and, and even more on the German side. And the Germans, by now, their army has been run down, ground down. They've lost most of their best soldiers, and they still have some, but they've lost a lot of men. And uh, it's only a matter of time before the Allies finish them off and defeat Nazi Germany once and for all.